Well, hello, good people. How y'all doing? Hi, hello. Let me move the camera down a little bit. There we go. Um, okay. So, still sick, still stuck in the house. And it is January 11th as of this recording. And I've been asleep literally for like four, five days. <laughs> like my energy level. When I recorded those last videos, I was good. And then... After that, it went down. I couldn't do nothing but sleep. So I'm forcing myself to get up and record. Um, I'm feeling better, but still the fatigue is hell. But nevertheless, we are here with another video. Um, I even broke a nail. My life is very incomplete right now. And I can't go get it fixed. Oh my God. Ugh. Sorry, I just had to take a moment to myself. <sighs> okay, I'm all right now. So today we are going to talk about five tips for future authors. Okay, I know I promised y'all I was going to get on here with the tips and the tricks and the advice on publishing, writing, accounting, all things great. So for those of y'all who don't know, um, if you don't know, now you know. I am an author of three books. I am working on my fourth one, which is a follow-up to the first one. And so it's Troubled, Renewed Strength, and One Flesh. So I've been an author since 2014 when the first version of Trouble came out. And then it was revamped in 2015 and re-released. I have been the CEO and editor of Victorian Publishing, which is a publishing company officially it was April 2020 but really going all the way back to 2018 when I started editing other people's books and now I have been publishing other people's books for the last year or two so <clears throat> I've been in the game a long time I made a lot of mistakes so that prompted me to create the publishing company in honor of my grandmother who was my biggest fan when I came out with my first book um, and on top of that, I am the CEO of Evans Financial Solutions. Shout out to Jen for my, my jacket. She does all of my embroidery, embroidery work. Uh, she did the Victorian publishing one that y'all see me wear also. Um, and so I'm the CEO and accountant of Evans Financial Solutions on top of everything else that I do. So I have accounting clients that are uh, small, medium, and big, large size businesses. But today we're going to talk about writing. <clears throat> and then if y'all see me again in this same outfit, it's because I went ahead and recorded the one for accounting as well. Um, so five tips. And these are tips that are just general tips. I'll get more into it. But these are just general tips that you should know. This is not like extensive on how to write a book, how to publish. It's not, that's not what this video is. But if y'all want to see those videos and I can make those, also on my website, which I always put my website links in the description. If you go to the victorianpublishing.com website, in the bookstore is, um, I did a training, a three-part training on how to become a published author. And I have the recordings and I also have the plans, like the template, the layout, the whole package you need that will probably answer all of your questions, or if not all, most of your questions. And they're available for purchase on the Victorian Publishing website. So if you want more detailed information, then you can go there and grab those. So tip number one. First, let me say there's a difference between a writer and an author. Those are two totally different things, and people don't realize that. A writer that's just somebody who writes. You could be a writer if you write in a journal, if you write for a blog, that makes you a blogger, but it also makes you a writer. Um, you can write for a magazine, you can write uh, contract writing, website writing. Like Writing is just writing with no publishing involved. To be an author means that you have created a published work. So means you are, you actually have a published book as an author. So I was a writer before I was an author. I always was a writer. Again, if you write in your journal, if you write blogs, you are a writer. Essentially, everybody is a writer because at some point in time, y'all know we all write. But it's not the same thing as being an author. Being an author is a whole nother different ball game. It's a whole nother different lifestyle. Once you cross that line of becoming an author, things change. 
things change. I tell people that all the time. It's one thing to be a writer, but when you're an actual author, that is a title, that is a lifestyle, that is that becomes who you are. So the first tip is know your why. So you want to know why you want, why do I want to become an author? What in me wants to be an author? Because if you don't have a why, then being an author is not really something that you want to do. Like anybody can be a writer, but not everybody can be an author. So you can't go into it with the mindset of, oh, I just want to make money or, oh, I just want to just put something out there just because like, no, there's so much more to it than just putting something together and throwing it out there. As far as the making money aspect, that comes with time. It does not come immediately. Um, so you don't want to, you want to have a mission. Like, is this something I really want to do? Because if it's not something you really, really, really want to do and that God is telling you to do, because I talk to all my clients, most clients that I get, it's like, okay, well, God told me to do this. I've been having this manuscript for, I don't know how long I've been trying to get this book out for, I don't know how long, like these are people that feel like, okay, I want to be an author. But if you don't want to do it for the right reasons, then it's best not to do it at all because there's a lot of work involved. There's a lot that comes with it after the fact because you can write a book and then not sell it. Like you got to have marketing, all kinds of things. So if it's not something you're really willing to invest in, then don't do it. Just flat out. Y'all know I'm, I keep it real and uncut. Don't do it. <laughs> like just save yourself the time and the money and don't do it. Um, because what will then happen is if you're not dedicated to becoming an author and you have a lot of other things going on, those things will become priority and your book will be put on the back burner. That's going to be the first thing to go. If you're in school, if you have a family, if you have a job, if you have life just lifing and going on, then that book is going to be the first thing you put to the side. It's like, oh, I don't have time. I haven't had time to finish it. I haven't had time to write it. So if you're not passionate about becoming an author and like really ready to put forth the effort, then it's best that you either not become an author or wait until you're ready to actually be dedicated to it and then start the process. Because with my clients, I tell, what's the deadline? What's the deadline? And whatever deadline you give me, I'm, keep, I'm holding you accountable. Because it's easy to say my deadline is next year and then next close to next year come and you ain't wrote nothing because you put it on the back burner. So I make sure to check in with my clients like, hey, you still working on your book? Like what's going on? Because I know how easy it is to put something on the back burner. Hence my book four that's being supposed to come out that I done put on the back burner. So you have to know what your why is. Second, just write. I tell all of my clients this, just write. I tell everybody I know who wants to become an author, just write. Don't try to sit there and think about, is it structured right? Or did I write it the right way? Is it supposed to be here? Am I supposed to break it up into chapters and blah, blah, blah? Because what people will do who don't know what they're doing, they'll try to edit the book while they're writing it. Don't do that. Don't do that. With my, my first book, it literally was like a 100-page journal. It didn't have no spaces in it. It didn't have any chapters. It wasn't laid out like a book. None of that. It was just a hundred pages of my life that I just wrote out. And then afterwards, I decided to make it a book. And then I went in and broke it down and did all that. So don't get in your head about what's, what you're doing right, what you're doing wrong. Just write the story. Just whatever it is that you're trying to write, whatever genre it is, whether it's your life story, whether it's a children's book, fictional story, just write it. Like literally, if you got to have your phone and you're like, oh, okay, well, I'm going to start writing in my phone. Or if you think of something, then it's like, okay, well, let me take notes. Another method I use or I used to use is voice memos. So I'll be driving to something and I'll be like, oh, that's a good idea for the book. And I'll record myself saying it because I'll forget it later, honestly. It my memory is horrible. So just write. Like, don't think about nothing else. Just write. Matter of fact, let me put my phone on. Break. Just start writing. That's it. That's it. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> just start writing. Don't worry about nothing else. Just start writing. Okay. That is your starting place. Um, three, readers are writers. 
because you have a lot of people who want to become authors and they don't read. Y'all got to understand, if you're not a reader, it's going to be hard for you to write. You have to be a reader. I'm not saying you got to read a million books a year. I'm not saying that I am an avid reader. I love reading. Always have. Always have. Um, since I was a little, like, baby, like, I started reading way ahead of my time. My mom and my grandmother would buy me all these books. Like, I've always been heavy on reading. And that helped me when it was time to come out with my book because I knew how books were structured. I knew how they were supposed to be structured. I knew how the theme was supposed to go, the layout, the plot, all that. Because I did nothing but read all the time. I actually hate that I can't read as much as I used to because I'm so busy. But in order to become an author, you have to be a reader. Because if you don't read, you're not going to be able to write. You're not going to understand what it's like to be an author. You have to be. You, I, people, they be like, I hate reading. I'm not a reader. I hate reading. If you hate reading, you're going to hate writing even more. That's this is a part of a part of life. You can't want to sell a book or want to write a book and you don't even like reading books. <laughs> like that makes no sense. So you have to be a reader. You have to have some sort of passion for reading. Again, you don't have to read a million books, but you have to have some type of passion for reading in order to be a writer or in order to be a writer and an author. So definitely read uh that will help you in your writing journey um i always give my clients recommendations on certain books to read when they are starting their author journey so you're going to need to want to do that because the that goes with the next step which is step four do your research so now when i say do your research don't be all on google trying to figure out how to write a book what it's supposed to look like that's not really what I'm saying. It's, if you're going to write about a specific topic, you definitely want to do your research on that topic before you write about it. But also, when I say do your research, I mean, make sure that you find a company or somebody like me, shameless plug, who is going to edit your book, publish your book, and guide you in the right way. Because I've heard so many horror stories about people who find these online companies and it's a fail. I did it my first time. That's why Trouble the Original is different from the Trouble that y'all see now. Because the original, I didn't have any guidance. I didn't do any research. Like, I did research, but I didn't really know what I was looking for. So, I ended up going through Lulu, which a lot of people probably have heard of Lulu. Um, it's kind of like a self-publishing website. And that book was garbage. <laughs> it was garbage. From the cover to, just, it was bad. Like, I might insert a clip of, I have on my wall, the original Troubled and then the, the remake. Okay, while I'm showing y'all the monstrosity of this cover, um, also another thing is you can hire a ghostwriter. I am also a ghostwriter. I provide ghostwriting services. So if you are not someone who can write a book, ghostwriting is also an option. Yeah, complete trash. <laughs> Throw it away. If you got the green one, then you know what I'm talking about. My day ones, A ones know what I mean when I say the green trouble, like the original. So make sure you do your research. I mean, I'm sitting here telling you when ain't no need to do no research when you got me. But in the event that you want to do research, just be careful with who you talking to, what what you go into. Like, don't let anybody talk you into paying this expensive amount of money. Like, look at their credentials. Look at what, what they're publishing. Like, do your research. Like, really do your research. Don't let nobody screw you over. Um and it's again don't get so heavy into the editing because if you go through the right people if you have the right editor then you'll be fine i had shonda lee cost as my editor who i was introduced to by charlie marco charlie marco is and will always be my mentor she was the one who guided me on the path to becoming an author shonda back then said that i was going to be more than just an author and i didn't believe her in 2015 and look at me now. 
So it's because that I had a great mentor and a great editor that I'm able to kind of pass the torch and help other people create their literary works, literary masterpieces. So make sure you do your research. Like, be careful. Just, just be careful. Um, and tip number five, save money. Save money. If you're going to do indie, which most people should do self-publishing or indie in the beginning. Now, with me and my publishing company, my authors are indie authors. They go through my publishing company, whether to sell the book, to edit it, go through the whole process. But at the end of the day, they have the rights to their book. I do not have the rights to their book. It's published under my company, but I make sure my authors retain their copyright. So save money because becoming an author and investing in that has a price. I always say generally you want to save at minimum eighteen hundred, but I've seen it go from as small as twelve hundred to as much as three thousand. It really depends on what kind of book you're trying to write, how long is the book, um, does the book have pictures, what type of book is it? Like there's so many different um cost factors. You have to incorporate editing, you have to incorporate cover design publishing costs, printing costs, you have to incorporate all of that. So you want to make sure that you have money saved or you have put money to the side for this project because if you go into it with no money, then you won't get anywhere. Um, and when I get into the editing uh, part of the series, yeah, I'm just going to make it a little series because it's, it's so much information. Excuse me. But again, on my website, I have a course that you can pay for and actually watch me go through the whole process. Um, so save your money because it's a costly project. You're essentially investing in yourself. Like you're essentially investing in yourself. And uh, going with that and do your research, be careful with people who come to you and say, oh, if you pay $5,000, then I'll publish your book. No. No, anytime you got to pay somebody that kind of money, some ain't right. <laughs> some ain't right. I know consult somebody before you do that because proper traditional publishing, they need to be paying you for your manuscript. Coming out 5,000, I've seen 15,000, 20,000 paying somebody that and say, oh, I can make you a published author overnight or I can make it in a week and blah, no. Mm -mm, that ain't legit. So when I say save your money, I mean save your money to be able to invest in yourself in becoming a self-published author. Because again, there's an investment, a monetary investment that you have to put in it in order for it to come to life. So those are the five tips. One, know your why. Two, just write. Three, readers are writers and readers are authors. Four, do your research. Five, save money because it is an investment. So those are the ones that I have for you. Those are the most important basic tips to becoming an author. Of course, like I said, there's so much more to it than that. But those tips is what will get you started. And those tips will help you get into the mindset of becoming an author and even deciding if you want to become an author. So that's what I have for y'all. If y'all want to hear or see more information on a specific tip that I just said or anything related to becoming an author or the publishing process or the editing process, drop your questions in the comments and I will address them in another video. If you have any questions, let me know. My information is always in the description. And also again, make sure you visit the Victorian Publishing website, check out our bookstore, check out all the books from my authors, from me, and also the courses that I have done on becoming an author. So until next time, I am going to get into more of these because I people been asking for them. And I've been telling y'all I was going to do it for the longest. So um, again, if y'all have any questions, let me know. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Hey to all my new subbies. Hey y'all. Hey. Hi. Hello. Shout out to Natalie for giving me a shout out and sending y'all over here. Welcome, 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 my love family. 
um, in all my new subbies. So shout out to y'all and shout out to Letitia. You already know who you are. A1 since day one. I will see y'all in the next video. Bye.